So Urban Meyer is in Jacksonville. And, you know, full disclosure, your former colleague over there at uh, Fox Sports on the pregame show, I mean, it, but, you know, you, you've known, you know Urban pretty well. Uh, how would you grade, if you feel comfortable grading him, his, uh, his offseason and preseason and sort of how things have gone leading into, into the year? Well, I, I'd say this much. I think they've improved the roster. You can so say what that's to get it. No, Give an I'm just saying it. They've improved. They, they've improved the roster. Um, they did that through the draft. They did that via, I think, the um, you know free agency. So that was the first step in doing things. You know, the preseason is hard to judge, um, in part because like you only got three games. A lot of here's the misconception too. Is a lot of people are like, oh, Urban's offense blended with Daryl Bevel and Brian Schottenheimer, like. Okay. It's not his offense. It's it's Daryl Bevels and Brian Schottenheimer. It's like that's the offense running. It's not a college offense, um, you know. So so like there's a misconception with all of that. Obviously, okay, you know. Let me, let me let me. I want to rephrase this question. Here's how I want to ask it. I'm Pete Prisco. I want to text. Listen, a hypothetical text thread with you. I'm lighting Urban Meyer up. What is your reply? My reply is like he's he's saying that because he's emotional because Urban probably didn't talk to him and went and visited with him. So like that's that that's I, I, I'm just saying like that's that's probably why he's reacting that way. You know, I think if you had a, a measured approach, you really can't have an opinion on what's happened so far because nothing's happened. I mean, they look great in the third preseason game, which if that's the one that you play your starters, you want them to go out and look their best, how'd that work out? They look great. So I'm not really sure, like, what to make of any anything that's happened so far. I think you need to get in the season, you know, w- let them play four, five, six games, and see how things go. You know, it, that's the hard thing about you know trying to make any sort of prediction. I'll say this much: that division's a mess. I mean, the Colts have between the rash of injuries and everything else going on. I'll be curious to see how Wentz is with, with Indianapolis, Houston's Houston. Terod Taylor's now the starter. So who knows what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson? I think that's a rebuild situation. So then you got the Titans, who I think can potentially run away with the division. But it looks like second place is open, in my opinion. So, um, you know, like knowing knowing Coach Meyer, knowing the coaches that are on that staff, uh, some of the players that are on that staff, I think they'll be more competitive than people give them credit. You know, okay. and and I and I, I and I do think we, we tend to forget they were the wor- they won one game last season. They won this one been terrible game. for years. For right. years, you know? So five games is a dramatic improvement from what they were a year ago. Like, it might right. not exceed his expectations or whatever the perception is out there, but that's the hard thing is it's hard to give a grade on anything when you're like, well, look, they lost their other first-round pick due to injury. Like, how can you – What I mean, what, what are you going to do with that? You know, I mean, you can't give him a bad grade because the guy gets hurt. It's one of those freaky things that happens. I also think, and I'm I'm guilty of this. And I mean, you know, like Urban, like I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge Urban guy, and that's whatever. It is what it is. Um, but I think we're all a little guilty of when there's a college coach comes to the NFL, whether it's Chip Kelly or you know Jim Harbaugh, Nick Saban. When they come, if NFL people are looking to pounce and looking to yeah, but but that's because and it, you're talking about NFL media, and NFL no. media gets scared of that because they don't have the ends with that coach. They're not going to be the person that they leak stuff to. They have no relationship with. And so it's personal and they get emotional and then they write with a little bit of a twinge on it. It's no different than, than you know, the political realm where if they don't have an end with a candidate, they immediately start to bash them and not like them. Like this world, this media hates anything that they do, they're not comfortable with. They can't get access to. That's the truth. That's the God's honest truth. So um, it, it's, again, it, We'll wait and see once they start playing games, what it looks like, how Trevor Lawrence looks, if he can stay healthy, all those things. But again, the, the reality is they haven't done anything right now that makes me think they're going to be a Super Bowl winning team. No. But I also don't think they're going to be the worst team in the league either. Uh, I would agree with that. And I think Trevor Lawrence and some of those players on Jacksonville, like Trevor Lawrence is going to be good. I, I don't believe that Brian Schottenheimer, Daryl Bevel, who are, you know, criticized offensive coordinators because <clears throat> they, people just don't like their their schemes. You know, it's not wide open enough. And and Urban Meyer, who, whatever you think about him and whatever you think will happen with Jacksonville's uh, future, is a good football coach. You know what I mean? Like, he just, yeah. he just, he just is a good football coach. And so I would be very surprised if Trevor – like, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is in a position where he's going to fail, barring injury. I just – I don't – I think Trevor Lawrence's no, talent I, is too good. 
you need to give it time. Like that's the biggest thing too. I think we need to be patient. We don't need to be looking for him to light the world on fire and 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 be Patrick Mahomes in his first year, or even what Justin Herbert did last year. Justin Herbert lucked out with a, a great situation. That's a good football team. He he, he got to play. You know, got the got drafted to. And he only play played for. because they actually stabbed Tyrod Taylor in the wrong spot before a game, and, and Patrick right. Mahomes point didn't play in his rookie year. Right. So I mean, again, people have to take it with a grain of salt. I think we tend to overreact. The biggest adjustment that they're going to have to make is, and one of the advantages that you have in college is obviously, it's not so, so much schematic, it's talent. So if you can win the recruiting battle, you've already got a leg ahead of your opponent. And then it just comes down to essentially e- execution and putting those guys in a position to win. In the NFL level, you've got to be able to have not only the talent, it's somewhat equated. If you don't, that's a problem. And I think one of the things that became a little bit apparent, now granted DJ Chark wasn't out there quite as much, but is if you can't separate, if you don't have speed, I don't think they have much speed. And so that's a problem. And so one of the things the priest is you can't afford to do is if you don't have speed, you can't show all the stuff that you're going to game plan and do what you get in the season. That's all those bunches, all those formations, all that, all the different uh, personnel groupings you're going to utilize to try to get guys open and scheme things up. You can't afford to show that in the preseason. If you feel like you lack some of the type of explosiveness or speed that you're accustomed to, at least at at the college level. No, that that's a great point. I mean, if you're there is no reason for the Jaguars to go out there uh, you know, leading into this season and to just show everybody what they want to do with their offense. That's not that doesn't benefit them in any shape, form, or fashion, really. No, I mean, and that's why again, just going back to your initial question, like, how do you grade them? I, I don't know. I don't know how you grade anyone. Like we, some teams didn't even play any of their starters in this in this offseason. The preseason. Yeah, Chargers so pre-season. How do you how do you grade that? Yeah, yeah. Chargers. I mean, how, you, how do you yeah. how do you how do you grade that? Like, what, what do you, what do you put incomplete? You know. Well, that's Not why. I, it, like, what do you do? That's why I changed the question to let you bash Frisco yeah. instead because that's much more I fun. Bash them. I'm just saying, like, it, it gets personal. Like, that's what that's what reporters are. Like, I, I remember with beat reporters, as long as you treated them kind. Like they're still gonna bash you if you don't play well, but it's not gonna look and feel the same, or it's gonna be written different. Like there's plenty of people who who I remember that were like that, and there's those that like. I mean, let's be honest. Tony Grossi and Baker Mayfield they had a beef. Yeah, and you better believe that Tony Grossi probably had a little bit more of of a sting to things that he wrote when things weren't going well in Cleveland. So, so I mean, same thing with like, Colin, kind of st- Colin Coward and Baker had that beef, and you know if Baker would have a bad game, it was just Colin's he jumps right on. Dirt. Yeah. Yeah, we're humans. That's how we react. So I, I just I tend to be a little bit more measured with things. I realize people have a job to do, uh, but I just tend not to overreact. 